Hello everyone, welcome to Math with Allison. Today we're gonna to be continuing our series on limits. If you haven't already, go ahead and check out some of my past videos. Make sure to click on that little eye icon in the corner, I'll send you there. Otherwise, today we're gonna to be talking about limits at infinity. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Question of the day, what's the difference between limits to infinity and infinite limits? So I have the definition written out here of both of them. Let's go ahead and look at infinite limits. It is a limit as x approaches a of f of x and it equals infinity or negative infinity. That's the big part. It is equal to infinity, which is why it's an infinite limit. So if we look at the difference between that and limits to infinity, we take the limit as x approaches infinity. So x is going to infinity or x is going to negative infinity. It doesn't necessarily equal infinity. So that's a big difference. So let's go ahead and look at some methods of solving. First, we're gonna look at polynomials. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x squared minus 5x. So what do we do with these kind of functions? We have to think of it in terms of their biggest power. So if I look at this entire polynomial, I see that 2x squared is my largest power. It's the largest degree on x. That means it's gonna grow a lot faster than just x. So for example, take a million squared compared to a million. A million squared is gonna be a whole lot bigger than just a million. So what we do is we take our largest power, I'm gonna rewrite this. If I use direct substitution, I get two times infinity squared. That's just infinity. It's just another big number. Let's go ahead and take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of this other polynomial. Again, I'm gonna use my shortcut and I'm just gonna take the largest degree. So I'm gonna rewrite this as the limit as x approaches negative infinity of just x squared. Because if I add two times infinity and subtract six, it doesn't make a difference because our numbers are just really big at that point. So if I plug in negative infinity into x squared, Squaring a term is always going to make it positive, and so this ends up going to infinity. And if we think about it in terms of a quadratic function, we have as x approaches negative infinity, our function is going up to positive infinity. So, again, think about the largest degree. In general, for limits of polynomials, try using direct substitution because that typically gets you where you wanna be. So let's go ahead and look at rational functions. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared plus two x minus five all over x cubed plus one. So there's multiple ways we can evaluate this limit. First, we're gonna divide by the highest power of x. What do I mean by the highest power of x? I mean the largest degree on all of our x terms. So looking at this function, I can see that x cubed is my largest degree. So I'm gonna write that down here and I'm gonna divide every single term now by x cubed. Really what I'm doing is I was multiplying the numerator by one over x cubed, and I was multiplying the denominator by one over x cubed. So that's how I distribute it to every term. I'm multiplying it by a giant one. That's when we're allowed to do something like that. It's not just coming out of thin air, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and simplify this a bit. So how are we gonna evaluate this limit? We're gonna go ahead and use this reminder, which tells us the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x is equal to zero, along with the limit as x approaches negative infinity of one over x is also equal to zero. And the same follows for any power of this. So this could be one over x squared, one over x cubed, so on and so forth. It's just gonna approach zero. So we're actually gonna use that to evaluate each limit individually or each term individually. One over x, when I take the limit as x approaches infinity, this little term goes to zero. Same with two over x squared, same with negative five over x cubed. All of these are going to zero. I'm gonna do the same thing in my denominator. The one, there's no x there, so the one just stays the same, but that one over x cubed also goes to zero. So when I'm evaluating this, I'm gonna take the limit, which means I'm gonna write in the values. So I get zero plus zero plus zero over one plus zero. That gives us zero over one, which is equal to zero. 
So we would say the limit as x approaches infinity of our function is equal to zero. So there is a shortcut to this. You don't have to do that process every time. The shortcut is where you just take the highest leading term of each polynomial. So the polynomial in the numerator and the polynomial in the denominator. I'm just gonna ignore the rest of the terms because when I add a million to a million squared, it's still a big number. I'm still working with infinity. So I'm gonna rewrite this. I took the highest terms from both the numerator and the denominator. Now I'm gonna go ahead and simplify because they have a lot of x's in common. And now this is a limit that we know, right? We know the limit as x approaches infinity of one over x is equal to zero. And so we get the exact same answer with a little bit less work. The first part shows us what's going on behind the scenes. It's showing every single step. This second step is kind of just skipping some of that, so it's a bit simpler. Whatever you like, you can do. You can do either of them. They're totally correct. It's just whatever your heart desires. Let's go ahead and look at trigonometry. We have the limit as theta approaches negative infinity of cosine of one over theta. I have the graph right here and you can see it absolutely goes crazy, but it seems to level out along the sides. So x is going to negative infinity and when x is going to positive infinity. Of course, we're gonna focus on this side and we wanna see what this is equal to. So like we talked about earlier, the limit as theta approaches negative infinity of one over theta one over theta approaches zero. So actually, I'm just gonna go straight into evaluating the limit. So one over theta goes to zero, so this becomes cosine of zero, which is equal to one. If I look at my graph, there's a secret one hidden right here, and that looks like the value that my function is approaching. And so we have the limit is equal to one because that's what the function's getting really, really close to. Let's look at another example. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of 42 plus sine of x over x. Let's go ahead and focus on sine of x first. So sine of x as a graph, I'm gonna draw it out here. I just wanna let you know I tried really hard on that graph. So the thing about sine is that it oscillates. It's constantly changing, but notice we're never a going above one and we're never going below negative one. So the limit as x approaches infinity of just sine of x is gonna be some value between negative one and one. It's gonna be somewhere in between there. So if you think of this as the limit as x approaches infinity of 42 plus some number between negative one and one over x, now you can think this is just a number over infinity. And using our limit knowledge, something like this goes to zero. So sine is oscillating. I don't really care what number it is on top because if it's a number between negative one and one, it's gonna be pretty small and I'm dividing by a really big number. So it's just gonna go to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and evaluate this. I'm gonna say when I take the limit, it's equal to 42 plus zero, which is equal to 42. This same idea applies to cosine. Cosine is constantly alternating between positive one and negative one. So that's all I have for us today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up and comment other videos, other topics, other questions that you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.